Topic two, debt issuance and interest expense. Accounting for long-term debt. Bonds are a common form of long-term debt and will be used for our illustration purposes. They can be interchangeable with how we account for notes payable, although it is typically likely to be easier to conceptualize bonds given that there is a stated rate as well as you know your nominal rates and your market rates whereas notes payable it may be implicit in the terms but the accounting will be the same for either so we'll walk through this topic with using our bond accounting bond valuation we need to look at it initially when it's issued at fair value. So that means the cash received net of transaction costs. And it's subsequently measured at amortized cost, which is the difference between its fair value and its maturity value. We're gonna be using your financial calculator to determine the interest rate and the amortization of that bond discount and premium. And this would occur when the market rate and the nominal rate are not equal. We are going to accrue interest each period and record the cash payments as they are made. If the nominal rate of the bond equals the market rate, as I mentioned previously, then the bond has no discount or premium. However, if there exists a timing difference which results in a difference between the bond's nominal rate, so the rate in which the bond was written, and the market rate, the rate in which when the bond went to market and was um, purchased, if there's a timing difference that results in a mismatch between the nominal and market rates, and the nominal rate is higher than the market rate, then the bond sells at a premium. So what this means is when the bond was written and when it went to market, if the market rate is now worth less, then this bond is gonna be paying an interest rate at higher than what the market can presently um, pay. So then this is a very favorable bond. So then the bond will sell at more than its face value. So, However, conversely, if the timing difference between the bond was written and when it went to market uh, is less, so the market interest rates went up, then we need to sell the bond at a discount to make it uh, equally as attractive, uh, attractive as a bond with now um, a higher interest rate. So if all things uh, are equal, you could go out and buy a newer bond at a much favorable rate. Therefore, your bond needs to be sold at a discount. We take that discount or that premium and we amortize them in the same, um, according to the same timeline as we do our interest expense over the life of the bond. We're gonna look at some examples. Company G issued a bond with a face value of $1,000 and a coupon rate, a nominal rate, of 8% on January 1st, 2019. The bond makes annual coupon payments and matures on January 1st, 2029. We're gonna look at three cases. One where the market interest rate is 6%, one where the market rate interest rate is 8%, and one where the market interest rate is 10%. I suggest you pause in the video and tell me which one of these is at a bond discount a bond premium, and which one is issued at par. Well, if you said that number one was issued at a premium, you would be correct. If this bond is paying 8% and the market, when it was issued, is paying 6 then the nominal rate is more than the market interest rate and it's more attractive and therefore it can sell at a premium. When it's equal, it's said to be issued at par. And when it's less, the nominal value, what it's paying in interest, is less than what the market is currently offering for interest, then we must sell it at a discount. Let's crunch some numbers. 
I'll put up on the screen what your PV calculations would be for each case one, case two, or case three. But remember, we said that number one would be at a premium, this would be a par, and this would be at a discount. So when we calculate our, our present value, it makes sense that because it's at a premium, we can attract a higher rate to market, so sell it for more, when it's the same as what we would get in the future. That means that it'd be at par. And when we need to make it more attractive, be sold at a discount. To record the corresponding cash, it would be as follows. You would record what the cash price is for each. You would set up a bond payable for the amount uh, that you would pay in the future. So what is going to be the future outflow of cash for each and in 10 years. And then the difference between what you're presently getting and what you'll be paying out in the future is either going to be a premium, so a, a liability, or, um, or a contract count, a discount on that um, bond payable. So typically we could see these gross either set up um, on their own, either contract count here, or we can see them net. So they may be um, summed together. It just depends on the preference of the financial of the company issuing the financial statements. Now, looking at case number one, where this was issued at a premium because our nominal rate was higher than the market rate, the first thing we do is look at cash. Cash is cash is cash. So we take the base value and we times it by the nominal rate. This is going to be the cash paid to our um, the purchaser of the bond. Then we calculate our interest expense and we take our interest expense, we times it by our current liability, so the net, um, the net impact of what we recorded um, and we get by our market rate, so the market rate which reflects the economic reality of this arrangement. So it's our 6% market rate times our $1,147.20 of our liability, and that gets us our interest expense. The difference between the cash out the door paid for the, um, the face value, the, uh, the coupon rate, the nominal value, uh, the payments, the cash interest paid, and the interest expense, that is gonna represent the amortization of the premium of the bond uh, bond premium. So as you see, we are oops, we are debiting the bond premium. So we're going to be reducing it over time, such that if you recall from the last slide for this one, such that this bond premium will be completely uh, zeroed out, and at the end of the ten years, the only thing left to pay will be this thousand dollars. The unamortized premium is the difference between the premium set up at the beginning of the loan and minus each portion of the amortized premium. So what's left in the books is the original $1,000 and then the unamortized premium to date. This would be the exact same but opposite if you are amortizing a bond discount. Now looking at accruing interest payable. This occurs when the statement dates do not match up with the interest payment dates, therefore we must accrue for our interest. You would do so by multiplying the full year's interest expense and the premium discount amortization by the months between the last interest payment date and the statement date. For example, if a bond pays interest semi-annually on October 1st and April 1st, and the statement date is December 31st, the cash interest payment for one such six-month period would be $9,000, and the discount amortization is $3,000. Journal entry at December 31st would be first needing to do the accrued interest payable, which would be 9,000 prorated for the three months between October 1st and December 31st, and then the same proration for the discount on the bonds payable.
Now, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, what could be abnormal here, we could have it where the bonds were issued, but then maybe they are sold uh, after the bond issuance date. And if that happens, we would calculate the present value of the bond considering only the future interest payments and the time remaining from the date the bond is sold. And if there was an issuance between interest dates, we would calculate the bond value at the two closest interest dates, the one that passed and the one in the future, and then prorate the difference using months. The first bond discount or premium amortization will be recorded, will be whatever is required to get the bond back on track with the amortization table. And the accrued interest would be since the last interest date was collected in cash by the buyer when the bond is sold. The previous example used the effective interest rate method of, of amortizing the bond discount or premium. That is what is required under IFRS. Under ASPE, you have a choice. You can either use the same method as IFRS, the effective interest rate amortization, or you can choose to use the straight line amortization. The straight line is exactly what you would picture with amortization, where you take the total amount to be amortized, divide it by the amount, the time period in which to amortize it by, and then you would be amortizing it in equal installments over that remaining life or time period. The result would be the same amount of amortization in each period. When looking at debt issuance costs, the fees and commissions, such as underwriting fees, legal fees, printing, and accounting costs, these are all frequently incurred when debt is issued. These costs create an extra discount or a reduction of a premium and are amortized over the life of the bond. These are recorded in an account referred to as deferred financing costs or similar and they are amortized in the same method in which the bond discount or premium are, discount, are discounted and amortized subsequently. Let's do a question. Company J issues a bond on January 1st, 2019. The bond has a face value of 50,000 and pays semi-annual coupons with a 6% coupon rate. The market interest rate when the bond is issued is 8%. What is the carrying value of the bond at December 31st, 2019? Is it A, 44,441? Is it B, 44,174? Or is it C, 44,719? Well, we have a few tricky things to look at here. First, we have to figure out what was the value of the bond on the issuance date. In order to do that, we would use our PV, our financial calculator, and calculate a PV of 44,174 using the inputs of, and this is where it gets a little tricky, because we're using the semi-annual coupon payments, we would double our N, so instead of being eight years, it would be 16 semi-annual payments. And because it was a uh, an 8% market rate upon issuance, if it's semi-annual, our market interest rate would be half as much, twice as often. So an N of 16, an interest rate of four, payments are going to be 1,500, which represents the face value of 50,000 times by the coupon rate of 6,000 divided by, or pardon me, of 6% divided by two because they're semi-annual, giving us payments of 1,500 and a future value of 50,000. The present value is 44,174. The difference between the face value and the present value at issuance is 5,826 because we are getting less than the face value. 
we had to discount it. And that's because when our bonds were written, it was at 6%. And then when they were eventually sold, when they were issued, it was at 8%. So we needed to sell at a discount. And that discount was for 5,826. So this is all what happened at the beginning of the story or when this was issued on January 1st, 2019. So then we've had a few things happen since January 1st, 2019. We've had two, we've had one payment and then we've had one accrual uh, for the next payment. So we look at our interest rate expenses and we would see that our interest rate expense for January to June would be 44,174, the present value, times by our 4%, which represents 50% uh, of 8% because it's only six months. That gets us our interest rate expense. The difference between the cash paid in the coupon and our interest rate expense represents the amortization of the bond discount. If we started with a bond discount of 5826 and we removed, we amortized 267, that leads us with an unamortized discount of 5559. So that means that we started off with a bond that was worth present value of 44,174. We add on the amount of discount amortized and that leads us with a carrying value on our financial statements as at June 30th, 2019 of 44,441. Then we need to do essentially the same thing, but for the second part of the year. So we take our carrying value of 44441 times by 4%, and that gives us our interest rate expense of 1778. We still, we always pay the same. So the company issuing um, the bonds, uh, they are still paying semi-annual coupon payments. This is what they're contractually must pay. The person buying them doesn't care about what, what, what you're all doing here. Whoops. And you need to, that's all for your accounting purposes. So the difference between what you pay and what you recorded for interest represents your bond discount amortization. You take what you had unamortized before, remove what you amortized this period, and you're left with an unamortized discount of 5,281. You add that, you add that um, bond discount to the amount of your, um, the sum of what was amortized to the original issuance, and you have a carrying value on your books, a pre uh, present liability as at December 31st, 2019 of 44,719. So you can see each period, this is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And at the end of the eight years, this will equal $50,000, which is what we'll have to um, pay to settle up this bond. That is the end of this video. We'll see you in the next one.